when I was certainly still at school, China was some influence, probably through my father and the bookshop which he ran, Arthur Probstone Bookshop in London in Bloomsbury. And I went to uh, Durham University uh, to study Chinese and uh, it was quite a novelty at that time and so that's where I had my basic uh, education in Chinese uh, really starting with Gu Wen, old Chinese, uh, old Chinese writing, old Chinese characters uh, and the old uh, classics like Lun Yu, Confucius so by the time I graduated from Durham, um, it was uh, 67. Um, I had the opportunity to study in Cambridge for a year and uh, it gave me a chance to learn more modern Chinese. Uh, so I, 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 I was there full of enthusiasm, taking some modern Chinese stories with me to, to read in Chinese. Um, but as I say, it wasn't part of the course. So I had to put that aside, except for one lecture lecturer, Martin Bernal. Um, he was youngish. He had already studied at Beida, Peking University. And he said, you know, just uh, do with me what you like. And I said, well, I'm trying to learn and, re and read uh, modern Chinese literature, modern stories. Um, I think Bing Xing uh, was the, the woman writer, was the writer which we chose for me to, to read with him. And uh, he helped me and encouraged me to write this uh, MA dissertation, well I chose the subject, uh, which is Lucian's views of the social function of literature, a case study in modern Chinese literary theory. I mean, I could really get to know more about the writing, and particularly Lucian, during the um, May 4th Wu Si Yundong period. Uh, when I joined a first visit group visiting China through Saku, SACO, the Society for Anglo-Chinese Understanding. And uh, uh, I went with a group of uh, different ages, I suppose about 20 of us, which was quite quite pioneering visit, of course, April 1971. And my sister Leslie was on that tour. Um, uh, I should just add that um, my mother had been on the previous tour, which was really the pioneering tour in 1970, the first Saku tour. When I was there enjoying this first tour to China, first visit, I'm very excited and very enlightened, I began to ask whether it would be possible to, uh, to go back to teach. And I think also through, I haven't mentioned yet, Joseph Needham, a Dr. Joseph Needham, who is a subject, of course, in himself. And uh, he, he uh, also, was encouraging and maybe instrumental in my going to China, to Beijing, Beida, to teach in 1972. I was 26 when I started teaching there. First of all, I lived at this very special place, which is very different in a Chinese context, the Yui Bingguan, the Friendship Hotel in Beijing. So, I mean, that's a kind of historic place uh, where foreigners um, teaching or translate, polishing in, in the translation. But also, it, it reminds me that there were long-term foreign uh, dwellers in Beijing. And the Adlers, Pat Adlers, these were real old, old friends of China who, uh, who lived there and were held in quite high esteem. I mean, you know, I, I visited them nearly every week. I, therefore, I tended to branch out when I was um, in, in Beijing, in about 85, I, did, I taught a summer course at Tsinghua Daxue through one of the teachers who was responsible for me all those years in, in Beida. Uh, she arranged for me to uh, go to, to teach in Shenzhen. And personally, there was a reason because I'd linked up again with Susu, whom I hadn't met for really for <laughs> several many years. Uh, we'd just been in touch corresponding and um, it wasn't possible really. It was still so difficult and, and, and um, unusual for a foreigner to marry a Chinese. But it's, um, it's probably typical and understandable at that time because when we just went into the office 
the registration office to get married, he nearly fell off his, his seat with, with, with a very polite and, you know, huang ying, huang ying. And sit, he said, because he said, I'm sorry, I've never married a foreigner with a, a, a native Chinese. Um, so I don't know what to do, kind of thing. <laughs> so, I mean, our, our daughter Lily um, was born in 1986. She was actually born in Beijing. Um, when, and, and, you know, we moved, finished the teaching and, and Susu's work in, in Shenzhen, and we went up to Beijing. And, and Susu gave birth to, to Lily in the, uh, the, the main hospital in, in Wangfujing. So th th that's so, but this very emotional link for Lily was there with Beijing. And she went back to teach there for a year when she graduated. So they had a, she had a year there and enjoyed it. It was great. Um, you know, we were all orientated towards China. I mean, me and my parents and my sister from the mid 60s. So, you know, anybody um, growing up in our family would be fatally attracted <laughs> to. To, no, not actually, I'm exaggerating now.